Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Dubin County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. Add joy. Library Connections number 119. This is the Friday, October 21st, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for the week from the New York Times. At number one, Long Shadows by David Baldacci, the seventh book in the Memory Man series. Decker works with a new partner to investigate a double homicide. At number two, The Maze by Nelson DeMille, the eighth book in the John Corey series. When a former lover offers him a job, Corey comes out of forced retirement to track a serial killer. At number three, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series and she uncovers a horrifying truth. At number four, It Ends With Us, also by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife, raised in a violent home, attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. And at number five, Fairy Tale by Stephen King. A high school kid inherits a shed that is a portal to another world where good and evil are at war. And on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for the week at number one, Confidence Man by Maggie Haberman. The New York Times White House correspondent traces events from Donald Trump's rise in New York City through to his post-presidency. At number two, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. And I would guess so from the title of that book, but I digress. At number three, Live Wire by Kelly Ripa. The daytime Emmy award-winning TV host shares stories from her life on and off the screen. At number four, Killing the Legends by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggard. The conservative commentator's Killing series profiles Elvis Presley, John Lennon, and Muhammad Ali. And at number five, the Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind in Innovative Treatments for Recovery. Our first recommended read for this week is the new authorized biography of the late Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts, who was quite a drummer. It's called Charlie's Good Tonight, The Life, The Times, and the Rolling Stones by Paul Sexton. He was known as the quiet one. Charlie Watts kept his head down, did his job as one of the finest drummers in rock history, and allowed his work to speak for itself. When he died in 2021, tributes came pouring in. He loved jazz and said, I am what I am, Thanks to this man, referring to jazz great Charlie Parker, he also loved classical music. He was a stylish dresser with a dry sense of humor. He was also a walking contradiction. The celebrity who kept his private life, well, private. A car enthusiast who didn't drive. A musician who traveled the world but preferred to be home. Watts was doing well at a London ad agency when he started playing with the Rolling Stones, assuming it would be a temporary gig. Things turned out a bit differently. 
60 new watts and includes personal touches that lend the bio unique soulfulness and warmth. With forewords by Mick Jagger and Keith Richards and a prelude by Andrew Lug Oldman, the Stones' early manager, this is a lovely homage to Watts, the man, and his music. And that's the book list review. Our second recommended read is the book, The Future is Female, 25 classic science fiction stories by women, from pulp pioneers to Ursula K. Le Guin. This is a Library of America special edition, and the volume is edited by Lisa Yazek. These 25 distinguished short SF stories from the 1920s to the 1960s invents the important early contributions made to the genre by women authors who were intrigued by its openness to hitherto unexplored experiences. According to editor Vazek, women made three major literary contributions to pulp and space age science fiction. First, depth and complexity of emotion, second, revised gender roles, and third, a sympathetic treatment of alien characters. A concentration of character development appears in Claire Winger Harris's 1928 story, The Miracle of the Lily, a thoughtful depiction of a human alien encounter, and continues throughout the collection. Notably in Zena Henderson's Touching and Perspective Ararat from 1952, which explores intuition and empathy. Men and women are often shown in reverse stereotypical roles, as in Doris Pitkin Buck's Stinging Birth of a Gardener from 1961, which presages later feminist work portraying the damage stereotypes can cause to both sexes. Valuable short biographical sketches of the author, some household names, and others no longer familiar, including some who wrote under masculine pseudonyms, round out this educational, enjoyable, and significant retrospective of science fiction's foremothers. And this one received a starred Publishers Weekly review. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation of the weekend. This is the brand new John Grisham novel. It's called The Boys from Biloxi. The audio is read by Michael Beck. John Grisham returns to Mississippi in his most gripping legal thriller yet. The riveting story of two sons of immigrant families who grow up as friends, but ultimately find themselves on opposite sides of the law. Grisham's trademark twists and turns will keep you tearing through the pages until the stunning conclusion. For most of the last hundred years, Biloxi was known for its beaches, resorts, and seafood industry, but it had a darker side. It was also notorious for corruption and vice, Everything from gambling, prostitution, bootleg liquor, and drugs to contract killings. The vice was controlled by a small cabal of mobsters, many of them rumored to be members of the Dixie Mafia. Keith Rudy and Hugh Malco grew up in Biloxi in the 60s and were childhood friends as well as Little League All-Stars. But as teenagers, their lives took them in different directions. Keith's father became a legendary prosecutor determined to clean up the coast. Hugh's father became the boss of Biloxi's criminal underground. Keith went to law school and followed in his father's footsteps, while Hugh preferred the nightlife and worked in his father's clubs. The two families were headed for a showdown, one that would happen in a courtroom. Life itself hangs in the balance in The Boys from Biloxi, 
a sweeping saga rich with history and with a large cast of unforgettable characters. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the new Catherine Stedman thriller, The Family Game. The audio is read by the author. In this addictive novel of suspense, from Thriller Award finalist Stedman, there seems but a single hurdle standing between brainy, beautiful, best-selling thriller writer Harriet, Harry Reed, in that storybook future with the man of her dreams, the dashing tech entrepreneur Edward Holbeck. And that little hurdle is his famously eccentric and strange family. Just how eccentric the family is, is something the newly engaged recent British transplant starts to glimpse following Thanksgiving dinner at the clan's Manhattan mansion when, after swearing her to secrecy, charismatic paterfamilias Robert gives her a mysterious cassette on which he hints will be his thriller in progress. When Harry finally starts listening, it sounds less like a novel than a criminal confession. In addition, Robert details her own darkest secret. As the intrepid Harry attempts to covertly investigate just how much of the tape might be true, the czar Holbeck family celebrations, more Hunger Games than Ho Ho Ho, put her in escalating peril. The blood-curdling cinematic climax plays out by moonlight Christmas Eve on the family's snow-shrouded upstate New York estate. Never mind the credibility straining twists, this pitch dark fairy tale will leave most readers spellbound. And that's the publisher's weekly review. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly and monthly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos which is found on the Southeast Dominion County Library's YouTube channel. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at the events the library is hosting both on and off site for the week ahead of us. This time around, that's the week of October 24th through the 28th, 2022. This information can also be found online. Just visit the library's website found at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, please just help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website, by calling the library, or just plain dropping by. On Monday, October 24th, we've got one program at the library. It's Happy Tales Therapy Dog Storytime from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. This program is being held in the children's section on the second floor and allows reluctant readers the opportunity to read to therapy dogs, which is quite fun. On Tuesday, October 25th, we have a whole host of programs at the library. Tuesday is always our busiest program day. Kicking things off with Adult Scrabble from 9 to 11 a.m. Adult Scrabble is held in the library's reading room. Then from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m., we have Coffee, Tea, and English Vocabulary. This is the first program of the week for adult learners of English. And the location is hybrid, so it's held both at the library in person and if you register with Mary Alice, your host, you'll get the Zoom link. And you can also attend from anywhere you happen to be. So if you're in another country, just know that you can still attend the Coffee, Tea, and English programs. Moving on to our next program, we've got Storytime with Miss Sue from 10 to 10.30 a.m. This program is held at the library in the children's section on the second floor. Then from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., we've got Coffee, Tea, and English conversation 
another hybrid program. Moving on to the afternoon and evening programs for Tuesday, October 25th. From 3 to 4.30 p.m., we've got Gatlas, Gay at the Library After School. This is a partnership program co-hosted by the Planned Parenthood of Greater New York and the Southeast Stabenn County Library. This program offers a safe and supportive space for youth to talk about gender, sexuality, and what's going on in their lives. This program is open to anyone ages 11 through 18, which is grades 6 through 12, and the program is held every Tuesday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Then in the evening from 6 to 7 p.m., it's the October Junior Chef Rice Krispie Pumpkins Pickup. The location is at the library slash drive-by because with this program, if you've already registered for it because the program is full, you will drive by the library and pick up your creation kit and then go home with your creation kit and access the online component where kids can join the online hostess to make whatever the recipe of the month is. And this month it's Rice crispy Pumpkins. Goodness, try saying that 10 times fast. Should be fun. On Wednesday, October 22nd, we kick things off with Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime. This program runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. and is held in the Children's Department, currently on the second floor. Then from noon to 1 p.m., we have the monthly Sticky Notes Thematic Book Club. This is a Zoom program, so you have to contact Michelle Wells, your hostess, to get the Zoom link. That's followed by Mejong, which is a weekly game program from 1 to 3 p.m., held in the library's reading room. And then from 3 to 4.30 p.m., we have the Young Adult Program Atlas Face Painting. Basically, this is an after-school program where kids can come to create and relax. No registration is required. Simply sign in upon arrival, and it's Wednesdays after school from 3 to 4.30 p.m. for students in grades 6 through 12. Then in the evening, from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the Corning Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program being held both at the library and via Zoom. On Thursday, October 27th, we've got one program at the library. It's Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club from 10 to 11.30 a.m., and this is a hybrid program being held both via Zoom and in person. Moving on to Friday, October 28th, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., we have the Kids Explore Homeschool Group Park, Meet Up, and Play. This is being held in McKinney Park in Corning. In the library contact, if you have questions, is Sue McConnell. From 1 to about 1.20 p.m., we have the debut of the new episode of Library Connections, a weekly reader's advisory video cast, which will make its debut on Facebook and then be available on YouTube. And then from 4 to 6.30 p.m., we have Teen Dungeons & Dragons, which is being led by Dungeon Master Jason. This gathering is suitable for ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space. This is a weekly program, come to one or all gatherings. Registration is required, just to make sure we have enough space for everyone. And you can register by the usual means, dropping by the library, giving us a call, or stopping by in person. And briefly, here is the list of our library program's contacts. If you have any questions about programs, let us know. If you have any questions about this video cast, as I mentioned, I'm Linda Reimer, so my contact information is right there. Email address and phone number. Feel free to pitch questions my way. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.